It was, it was a good day and listen we don't want to get carried away because we've won a, a home game but it's obviously important, it was an important one for us because it was against a very good side um, who have been doing very well and obviously for us it was just as you say to, to, to lift the burden which has been at home and now people don't even think of asking about it now which is which is important so we must now build on it. We saw the reaction of the supporters at full time, what was it like back in the dressing room? Yeah, no the players I think it was you know, it was more just relief, and and I was really happy for them, and as and, and the fans as well because it's been such a long time to have to wait that long for for the win, especially with the, how we had been playing on a lot of our games at home. So uh, so to finally get there, I think it was just huge size sigh of relief, and as I said, you know, I said to the players afterwards, you know, you've had to carry the burden for 10, 11 odd months now, but now it's been put to bed. Now we must objectively now go on and look to make this a real hard place to come. Now you've got a busy time coming up on the pitch, but off the yeah. pitch firstly, uh, with the loan signings coming to an end, how busy have you been? No, but we've been, you know, looking at one or two possibilities and um, and it doesn't like look, look like certainly at this stage they're going to come off. I think it's because it's so close to the, you know, the January window as well and, and December's a busy month for teams, you know, lots of teams have six, seven, eight games maybe in that period, so... Uh, most teams are going to to stay, you know, with the groups that they've got. I won't just bring anyone into here. You know, it has to be the right type of player and the right type of person. So uh, if I've got to wait for that, then find the team's doing well at the moment. I've got enough striking options that will that will certainly do us until we need reinforcements. So um, and obviously, while the team's in a good moment as well, I don't want to disrupt that. So the the spirit is strong, and we'll only bring in. You know the right type of player that is going to improve us. You mentioned it's a busy time on the pitch. Uh, we're almost into the Christmas period, and we talk about this mm. being make or break time year after year for a team. But if you look at your fixtures; you're playing a lot of teams around you, aren't you? It, mm. it could define your season the next few few weeks. Well, I certainly think it's going to it's going to help us. You know, if we can get some positive results. You know, you know we get Derby, which will be a, a real good game on Saturday, and obviously we get Sheffield Wednesday after that, and then we've got. Palace and, and Scunthorpe so so those, those four games alone are going to be really good games and obviously then we kick on after that but um, but no, I, I think it's just making sure that it's not going to happen, happen straight away just bit by bit now it's very difficult to forecast you know and, and especially in this league but what I know is if we bring our A game and another team brings their A game there's a big possibility we will win it's, and, but I can't forecast what the other team is going to bring all I can ensure is that our group are prepared mentally, physically, technically and tactically. And, and as I said, we've seen that in the last numbers of games. So, uh, so no, it's certainly a busy period. And if you can pick up the points, it's a great possibility then for you to go into the new year with the motivation high and, and, and push on. But it's, it is really, you know, let's get Derby, just totally focus on Derby, get a positive result there take that off and then get into our next one. A word about Derby, we talked about Ian Holloway last week, is a, a bright manager and Nigel Clefford, a young manager, in, in some ways not too dissimilar to yourself, what are your thoughts about his team and he, he, he as a manager? Yeah, no, he's, he's a good man, he, he, he'd done his apprenticeship didn't he at Burton, you know, was there for many years and, and finding out what management was about, was a terrific player obviously in his day. Um, and now he's gone into Derby which is a massive job because not too long ago they were in the Premier League and and having coming into here and experiences what you know a team that's been out of the Premier League for a few seasons, you know all the things that come with that in terms of squad numbers and and squad dynamics. So, so he's obviously got a very difficult job there, which I know he's he's tackling the very best they can. And uh, but now he's a good man, Nigel. As I said, the big squad there, they had a, a number of managers in a short period of time, and obviously when a manager does come in, he will always bring his own players. So that always adds to the mix as well. Um, but for him. You know, I know that they'll be motivated to do well. They've picked up most of their points at home uh, this season. I went to Swansea last week to watch them at Derby, and, and probably by their own accounts, they didn't play as as well as what they would have liked. So their motivation will be renewed for to to win at home. So uh, as I said, it's uh, it'll be a great game. The stadiums, you know, I remember going there last season. Stadiums, fantastic. You know, always got a big support. You know, thirty odd thousand and. It should be a very good game. And just finally, Brandon, how, how's your squad shaping up injury-wise? Shane Long back and available this weekend? Yeah, well, we had a practice game yesterday of which he played in and got his first sort of 90 minutes and uh, 
Nah, as I said, he, he's hopefully now over his injury and fighting fit. You know, he's worked very, very hard. You know, off the field as well. You know, to get his condition right. Uh, so now the condition is is good within himself. Chris Armstrong played as well. Um, but apart from that, now we've got a couple of wee sort of niggles and stuff, but nothing, nothing major really. The, the squad's very, you know, we're very happy at the moment. You know, and like we have been over the last numbers of weeks. So we just want to continue to to build that momentum and, and keep moving forward. Yeah, best of luck. Thank you very much. Brendan, um, we mentioned Ian Holloway. Okay. He was ranting on about the multi-ball system. Um, has there been any follow-up to Ian Holloway's complaints? Uh, and what do you generally feel about the multi-ball? Uh, no, there'll be no follow-up to the complaint. I, I agree with you in, in, in a certain way. You know, I feel that you know, because teams are given a choice whether you do it or whether you don't do it, and I just think that the decision should be made very simply: either everyone does it or everyone doesn't. Because if you do it, you have to make it work to your advantage. You know, uh, but obviously you go to some grounds and they don't do it. So there's ways in which to, to do it. You know, like, like in the Premier League, it doesn't happen. You, you don't do the multi ball in the Premier League. Simple. So everyone's on the same thing. But where you can get an edge or an inch, then you have to you have to do that. And obviously, we look at our, you know, how we do it here, and. Uh, as I said, we try and, if there's an advantage in it, you know, but also being fair and honest, and, and, and obviously then, then we do that. Well, who talks to the ball boys about it then? Does anybody brief no. them before? No. <laughs> We've got, uh, no, there's a guy who takes um, charge of them and, and he does a very professional job ensuring that the young guys are uh, well schooled on, as I said, how to be fair and honest. Okay. Changing the subject. Um, FA Cup draw coming up what's your view going to be with team selection Carling Cup seems to indicate you might make a few changes uh, just depends I want to be strong in it you know, and I know I've got a squad here that I trust but you know, I, I felt that I still feel that the FA Cup is still a, an opportunity to build momentum You know, it's a game that you can win and it's a cup competition that you like to progress so will I change the whole setup? no I won't but again there'll be a core of a team and, and maybe a few changes but as I said there might not be any So, uh, but it's certainly not one where I, I just go drastically and take out the starting 11 and put in a new 11 I, I won't do that Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Cabrera and Samuel Yeah, I just uh, Churchy trained today and looked bright and, and the couple of days that he'd had just looking at his the sort of problem he had with his pelvis wouldn't have done him any harm either because he'd been away internationally Played a lot, a lot of travel, came back, played in the game and obviously done well. And So the couple of days extra wouldn't have done him any harm anyway. But he'd look good today in training. And obviously, and Jimmy likewise, you know, the dead leg. And sometimes they're hard to, to shake off. But he, um, yeah, he, he was fine also. He's trained the last couple of days and, and looked very good. Got uh, more, more, more options up front than last week in a sense, haven't you, then? With, uh, with obviously with Longy available and, and yeah. all that. Yeah, and, and that's the idea, isn't it? You want yeah, different yeah. dynamics to bring into the game. You know, you want to be able to change the game uh, if, it, if it needs that, and uh, and obviously with players with different types of qualities, it's important that you can do that. So, so now it's good to have them all back fit. And um, but I think now the situation, it's good for the players because they now see the team, the team's winning, and they, and if you're outside as a player, you probably don't have an excuse. Yeah, yeah. You know, you just got to bide your time, and when the opportunity comes, when it comes to you, you have to be able to take it. So, uh, and that's what I've been obviously searching for since I've been here so it's been much more stable and and uh, you know but the players outside the squad are very important and I always offer them the respect because it's important that they're ready for when the rest they come in and, and they've been working terrifically well. Can you, uh, can you comment on the Icelandic uh, trialist? Yeah, but on that not only to the point that you know Gunnar was uh, is it a boy that we've we've looked at over the last couple of weeks yeah. um, He's the link striker, you know, he's a highly rated player. Gunnar, as a younger player, went through and got a big move to Germany and uh, and obviously then has, has gone back to, to Denmark. So uh, it's something that, that both our clubs are looking at now, you know. He's he's a good player, he scored two goals in our, our game yesterday. He's shown up very well in training. Um, as I said, he is that link one. He's a really clever footballer who can play in between the lines and, as I said, can link the game and technically strong. So. Uh, and he's mature, you know, he's 27 years of age, 
he's a good guy and so it's now between the clubs, we'll have a wee look and see what we can do. He's not available anyway, he you couldn't... Can't you he can't... League, can you, anyway, nah, he wouldn't be available until, until January. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. And obviously the international uh, signing for players that open until the 5th of January, I think it is. Right, okay, so, yeah. uh, so it's something that he, he goes back to his club today. Um, and um, we'll look and see what's possible and if we can agree a deal in the next... Uh, in the next few weeks. I know Derby have got a few problems up front as well, I think, haven't they? They may only have uh, two, two fit strikers, I think they're trying to do something. You must, you must see this as a, a good opportunity to get, you know, three points even. I mean, you know, you won at, you won at Coventry uh, last time away from home, so, yeah. Mm. But we're very confident, and, you know, I felt that, I feel good into every game, mm. you know. I feel that once I get my group and there's that group, that core, right, I feel confident going into every single game, and, and obviously in particular away from home, because yeah. we've got the game that can hurt teams. You know, our, our passing can can frustrate teams when we're away because we keep the ball. You know, and obviously our pace can hurt teams in behind. So, uh, so no, I'm confident going into every game that we play that we can that we can get three points. And you know what I see every day from the players and how they work, and it doesn't leave any difference. So. Uh, so no, we we enter every game. We know it's they're difficult to forecast games in this league. We know it's a tough game, of course, but you know we'll, we'll go into it very positive and, and as I said, have them uh, have them work well and, and hopefully pick up three points, as you say. Have you talked to the chairman about available funds and that kind of thing for the January transfer window? No, we we obviously had a we, we spoke in terms of the journey so far. You know, last week. Um, the reality is, mate, there's not going to be a lot of money here. That's that's the fact, you know. Those days of where you can go and and spend the money and spend a lot of money, or certainly in the foreseeable future, won't won't be the same. But there's still possibilities to do activity. You know, we just have to, as is, be maybe a wee bit um, clever and and really look into our loans and and, and other bits and pieces as well. So, uh, but. If you're asking, is there a load of money to go and sign new players? And I don't think you get the best players in January anyway. I've got to be honest. So I think if we do bring anyone in in January, it'll yet yeah, hopefully be to support the group and, and add something to the group. But any any big business has done really the types. You know, the real uh, is, is normally done at the end of the season really. So a national newspaper thinking Reading would build 1.75 million made for Brian Stock is uh, quite wide of the mark, should we say? He's a very good player. He's an outstanding player. Is he, is he someone that you would be interested in bringing to Reading? Really? Fran's a very good player, you know, but he's a player at another club. I got in trouble when he spoke <laughs> before, so I won't say too much. Now, listen, he's, you know, an outstanding talent, Brian, and um, he's obviously, you know, done very well for, for Sean at Doncaster, you know, became a Welsh international. Uh, if you're asking the type of player, then yes, you know he's a footballer. He understands the game, but he's a player at another club. So you know, I'm I'm not in that business to to be talking about other players. But I've seen you know there was comments this week as well about us being turned down for a for a move for a Chelsea player, Fabio Berini, which is nonsense. I've never made an inquiry about Fabio, you know. And, and when I do, I speak with Frank Arneson and we've got a close relationship, and you know that uh, when those players need to go out he knows that if there's a place for them to come and for them to be and if there's possibilities here then we will look at it but it, it's it's something that was, was nonsense really. Quick word on Darren O'Day, what's his future at Reading looking like? No, well, Darren's obviously back, he'd, um, some, you know, he, he was sort of given a free weekend really, uh, some uh, personal Things that he obviously had to had to deal with. So, uh, but now he's come back, and his his long period is obviously up in January. So we need to review that and, and see where we're at. Um, he's been a great addition to the squad because at the time in the summer when we needed players, we uh, we had one centre half, recognised centre half, and Alex Pierce. I'd already spoken about Darren, uh, and obviously then he's came in along with Matthew Mills and. As has added really well to the squad. So, uh, so now it's something that obviously over the course of the next couple of weeks we'll need to assess and, and, and then take it from there. But I know, you know, his life here, he's really enjoyed the experience and uh, he's really enjoyed the football. So, uh, so we'll see in the next couple of weeks.
finally just last one, Dave Mooney at Charlton. I know Phil Parkinson is keen to keep hold of him. And he's also said that he would, you know, have to look at come January if something was to happen more permanently, he had to look, sit down and look at that with his family. Is there a possibility that he might be moved on in January? Again it's something we need to look at. It's you know, I wouldn't say Dave in particular, but the squad will have to be trimmed. You know. I don't need to from now on in, I don't need to lose anyone that I don't have to. You know, I think so that's the no, no, absolutely. I think that's the key to it now. I think in the summer it was I have you know yeah. the club has no choice. You know the the financial situation at the club uh, becomes you know had become difficult for probably the first time in ten years. You know I think you've seen in the statement. You know and that's maybe unlucky for me as a manager, but for the first time in a, a raft of years, the overdraft facility was called in. Which you know everyone knows economically now, whether it's a, a ten quid overdraft or a eight nine million pound overdraft, the banks are, are closing in. So, uh, so that business that ha that was done in the in the summer had to be done. There's no choice in it. I think for now, you know, there's a choice. So I don't need to lose anyone that I don't want to. And obviously now we're we're looking at building a squad for this, you know, for the remainder of this season to be competitive, with an idea to make sure that next season we can have a right go and that doesn't quash any ambition for this year it's just that you know this season is a case of juggling about trying to find the dynamics of the group the team the system and then next year or have this you know I said there'll be two windows to trim the squad down obviously January and end of next season and or end of this season and then uh, and then we can then take hope, hopefully a leap forward then